This stream is proudly brought to you by what is ZS.com. ZS is coming soon. Okay, friends, subscribers, and all you YouTubers out there, I'm currently online with Dr. Andrew Catalatis, also known as Dr. Pot. And Doc, I've got to ask you, before we do anything, how did you get that nickname? The newspapers gave it to me, um, Tony. Yep. Uh, one day the newspaper decided to refer to as Dr. Pot. I mean, I'm easy with it. It's silly, but so are the newspapers, but that's where yeah. it came from. Yeah, no. Don't worry, they gave me the name Captain Golf Trek in the old days. So I know what uh, it's like. I know what it's like, mate. And I do apologise for everybody. We are having webcam issues today and um, it's playing up a bit. Um, I do apologise to everybody in regard to that. But um, what the show is about today is pretty much why isn't cannabis legal yet? It should be. It's one of the best things that I have ever used for pain. Uh, I went to Canberra, as everybody knows by now, that I went to Canberra after one of my strokes and my friend introduced me to cannabis oil. And um, I will, pretty much by the time I came home, I had reduced my medications by half. And I was on pretty big doses of endone, panadine, fort, and uh, which I am now back on, unfortunately. And um, so, Doc, what do you think it is, the, the reason? that they're not actually um, making it easy for people to get use of it. Yeah, well, the answer to that question is why was cannabis made illegal in the first place? And by now, I think just about all your listeners would be aware of the Reefer Madness campaign, which yeah. was basically political propaganda launched in the 1930s uh, in the United States, which then spread to a global prohibition. Now, the factors there were threefold. And they all still apply today. Now, the first thing was artificial fibres, with the first being nylon, was invented in 1933. And in the same year, a machine to greatly simplify the processing of hemp, called a decorticator, was invented. And the decorticator was said to make hemp fabric much, much less expensive and much more available, yep. which would have left no marketplace for nylon. Yep. That was one, one component of the reason. The other components of the reason were alcohol prohibition that ended from or proceeded from 1921 to 1933. Yep. And uh, then there were 10,000 cops who'd been prohibitionist cops, went looking for another reason to, um, <laughs> another, you know, substance to uh, prohibit, basically. <laughs> so they sort of kept their crooked little industry going. Yes. Um, the whole business was funded by the Mellon Bank, the, the Reef of Madness campaign, who'd actually supplied um, funding for the development of nylon. And they, they employed Harry Anslinger, who was related by marriage to the, to the Mellon family, uh, to be their sort of hitman and run the Reef of Madness campaign. So that's how it started, and it's there for the same reason. I mean, if your question is specifically about medical cannabis, we'll address that in a moment. But there is an enormous capacity for hemp products, both in building material and fabrics and all sorts of cordage, to replace non-biodegradable poisonous plastics. So the way we, the way I sort of conceive it, from 1937 really, the world lurched away from. Uh, carbohydrate sources of their fibre and went into hydrocarbon sources. And if we're to save this planet in the quality that we'd like it to be, we have to move from this hydrocarbon nightmare back into a carbohydrate economy where we grow things. Yes. But hemp plastics are a reality. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners should already or may already know that Henry Ford built a car from hemp plastic in 1941 that was one-sixth the weight of steel with ten times the impact resistance. Yeah. And but in our documentary, Billion Dollar Crop, we, we show him before hitting the car with a sledgehammer. That was 1941. But the prohibition put an end to that. Yeah. Interestingly, and this is interesting, during the Second World War, the Americans found themselves very short of fiber because they'd already banned hemp 
and they couldn't get any processed Indian in because the Japanese had occupied the, the trade routes there. So they legalised cannabis cultivation in 1941 for the um, Hemp for Victory campaign. In fact, it was compulsory to grow the hemp there. Right? Yeah. But again, in 1946, they made it illegal. So to answer your question, um, it's basically a grotesque act of industrial espionage which led to prohibition in the first place. But now the medical... Yeah. Uh, um, now, before you go I mean, one step, Scott, uh, yeah. can I just make a point out that when he's talking in regard to the uh, fabric nylon and everything like that, what a lot of people don't know is that nylon is oil-based, hence oil-based products. So oil industry, I just thought I'd better throw that one in there, Doc. Yeah, no, it's a petrochemical product. It's a hydrocarbon. It's one of the hydrocarbon byproducts, no doubt about that. Yes. Yeah. Now, where will we up to? Medical. Yes. The way the pharmaceutical industries go, and remember, pharmaceutical industries are now sort of behemoths in, in scale. They're often bigger than, than uh, medium-sized countries in terms of their budgets. And they've got that way by creating illness in the population and then uh, bloody hawking a cure for it. I'll give you one example. I mean, over the last 20 years, there's been a grotesque increase in thyroid disease, especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And um, yeah, my sister I mean, it's due had to a that. number of factors. Uh, it's a failure of the thyroid, basically, an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland, which renders it inoperable. And it makes the person a candidate for their medicine, thyroxin, for life. Yes. So once you've started on the thyroxin and spent about a year on it, there's very little hope of reawakening your thyroid. So you become a customer for life and a compulsory customer. Um, you know, this is a serious business. They've created this epidemic of thyroid disease, firstly by the exposure to excess fluoride, which is a, a direct comp in competition with the iodine. They've grossly restricted the access to iodine in the diet by recommending yeah. you only need 150 micrograms. But in reality, you probably need 10 to 20 times that. Yes. And when you throw in contamination from fluoride, bromide, chlorine, and other halides, which compete with the iodine, you probably need a little more to flush it out of your system. Yes. So they engineer diseases. Now, cannabis, in my experience, because it has such a broad therapeutic range of activity, and remember, I mean, what other medicine in existence, works in sort of neurodegenerative diseases, cancer, movement disorders, inflammatory bowel disease, you know, autoimmune diseases. It's it's unbelievable, and as people are starting to realise now, that's because it operates through the endocannabinoid system, which is the body's primary homeostatic system. So, if cannabis was let off its leash, as it were, I mean, in a technical sense, they've legalised cannabis now, in a technical sense, but in a reality, in a supply sense, it's not legalised. Yes. Right? A small number of poorly informed doctors yes. are dispensing a second-rate industrial product in yes. the name of cannabis medicine. Uh, they're not using any lifestyle or diet modifications which are uh, you know, essential to get the full benefit from the cannabis. Yeah. And um, they continue with their prescribing ways. It's a very serious situation. I, I describe it uh, Tony, as yep. a case of the fox minding the pigeons. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a joke actually. It's sort of like I've actually got them just trying to actually it's share. Not, it's something. not a joke at all. No, I won't have that. It's not a joke at all. The jokes on us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, no, know, to them it's a joke. Are dying or living substandard lives because of it. It's a yep. long way from a joke. It's a criminal enterprise. Yes. In the name of scientific medicine. Uh, Right. No, I mean, people say there's lies, damn lies, and then there's statistics. Well, they've done it with statistics. Yes. Um, they prove that their their pharma drugs, in inverted commas, prove that they, inverted commas, work, uh, whereas they usually just dis dispense with side effects and a second-rate semi-control yeah. of any disease process. Yeah. Now, I'm just sharing the TGA form on the screen right at the moment to everybody. Like... Which forms that? The TGA, the special access to uh, oh, yeah, special yeah. access scheme category B form, um, which my doctor filled out on uh, Friday, and um, 
I had to, the strange thing is, I had to actually go and find another doctor, which took me three months plus to, even though I've been talking to the government, I couldn't find a doctor. And uh, they said, no, 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 it's legal. It's sort of, and I know I fit under five separate categories in the highly recommend to prescribe this medication. And um, I pretty much only had to take my knee brace off yesterday and show the doctor, but I had the good sense to take in all, not yesterday, on Friday, take in all my medical records. I had all my scan results just from the last year sent to him because a lot of the stuff that's yeah. going on with me now. Um, but what you're doing here, Tony, is highlighting how ridiculous the system is. Yes, my... So they not only in, in allow you to get access to dangerous drugs like fentanyl and endone, and drugs that kill thousands of people annually. Yeah. I'm on endo. In the US, yeah. tens of thousands. Yeah. 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 Um, they're significant addictive drugs with a raft of serious side effects. Yes, one uh, is. They're pushed at you. Yeah. Um, I mean, our work will continue until Canada's preparations in a range of different forms yeah. are available in the first line as a herbal medicine, yes. not as the last port of call after you've exhausted every ineffective allopathic medicine. Yeah, it should be. It should be um, prescribed. And when I think about it, I've had this condition since I was 18. And um, it's when I had my accident. And um, I've been in pain pretty much ever since, every day, 24 hours a day. The pain never stops. I've since done my knee and uh, nine further discs and my shoulder, so it never stops. And um, But they do. They freely give me endone and um, everything because I've got to have something that works. I've been to the pain clinics and I've been trialled on all the drugs, found out I was allergic to the epilin and the gabapentin, the epileptic drugs that do actually kill pain for some people. I was actually allergic to them and um, I went through all the trials at the pain clinic, but not once was I tried on cannabis oil. Not once. And um, But before that, when I was young, I, you, I, I don't deny it, I was a smoker and um, it turned around and they sort of stopped me by law and because it was pretty lax back then when I was growing up, but then the laws got tough and the fire, people were starting to get arrested so I stopped and then all of a sudden I started having to go to the doctors and the hospital to get injected with morphine and everything and that's when they started sending me to the pain clinic and um and endome was the only i mean this this story is i mean you'll hear that a, a, a thousand know, times every yes. situation yes. If, if you listen carefully yes it's a it's a tale of, of woe and misery yes yeah. preventable and unnecessary yes right but, i mean dangerous drugs high side effects and little effect yes my, uh, it's not the way to sort of get the best from your population. My doctor didn't even know the name of the, the other doctors that prescribed or anything like that. She sort of anti this, doesn't think it will work. And um, even though I explained to her when I came back from Canberra that I, I showed her physical evidence because I only asked for half the dose. So if that doesn't prove that it works, and it, it's going to take me a bit of time, um, the dosages that I was on down there, he had to use the highest doses he had, but it did eventually kill my pain after I think it was six or seven drops of the high dose. And But six or seven drops of that is not going to kill me. Where really end like those really in the scale of things. Well, right? cannabis has never killed yeah. anybody yet unless it's been in a drug war. Yeah, no, it's in... What I try and impress on people, Tony, yes. is that in the regard to safety, right, and you know how we assess safety in, in a technical sense, yes. they usually talk about LV50, which is a lethal dose that will kill half the population that yes. it's exposed to. Yes. So say, for instance, you're dealing with alcohol, yes. say your normal social dose is five drinks, yeah. But you have four times that. You have 20 drinks. Yeah. There's a good chance that could kill you from yes. alcohol poison. Yeah. Almost right. died from that one. Yeah, 10 times, it yeah. would kill you. And yes. just let me this. So the LD50 is between 4 and 10. Even for water, yeah. the LD50 is around 10. So if you have 10 times more 
than a normal amount of water, you can get swelling in the brain and you can even die from it. LD50. On the other hand, cannabis, no one's actually determined an LD50. In animals, it's estimated to be in excess of 40,000. Now, there's not even another substance, even water, Right, that has an LD50 approaching those sort of numbers. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, aspirin or Panadol, for instance, the, the LD50 is, is only something like about 8 to 10. If you have like 10 times the therapeutic amount, you can have liver failure. Yes, yeah. But certainly if you have 20 times, you'd, you'd be guaranteed a liver failure. Yes. So it's it's a hypocrisy on a massive scale. You don't and need... we really have to look at it. Now, we, we've got to be honest with ourselves. We've got to look at it. It's an economic war by big pharma to keep the people sick and poor. Yes. Right? Sick because of their sort of devitalised diets and their false health information. Yes. And poor because they have to spend a fortune on the medicine. Yeah, that's it's a joke. It's really an intolerable situation. Yeah, well, I'm looking at um, 600 bucks for my first doses. And I'm tr- currently trying <coughs> to find out where that money's going to come from. I'm a, yeah. I'm a pensioner. Where, where the fuck am I going to get the money? Yeah. Uh, Listen, the only ray of sunshine in this sort of whole sort of business, and where the government would rather have you sick and poor than uh, well controlled. Yes. And the only ray of sunshine really is the courts are increasingly recognising what we refer to as medical necessity. Yeah. That means, at least in, in my case, and now in a couple of other cases, it was proven to the jury that it was the preferred option was to break the law right, rather than have someone or yourself suffer a medical adverse outcome. Yes. So if you can prove that it's to prevent serious illness or death, yeah. um, that is medical necessity and, and we'll prove that it's important. Yes. And even the magistrates are increasingly recognising the science use of cannabis for medical purposes, the penalties are sort of much, much lower. Yes. Uh, than they were a few years ago. So there is a, a growing awareness. Yeah. But at the official level, at the federal level, for instance, I mean, people ask me, when are they going to legalise cannabis in this country? My answer is, as long as this fascist, mongrel government that we have is in power, the answer will be never. Yeah. It's not until there's a clean, like a clean sweep of a new broom taken. Yeah. That sort of rest of nest of rats. Yeah. And I mean, I use colourful language intentionally. Oh. Anyone, for instance, just take the work with the epilepsy. Yep. They know because we proved it to them with lots of clinical cases, and three different premiers have seen children we've treated and you know heard testimony from their parents of how well they're doing. Yes. So if they're prepared to have thousands of Australian children suffer and their families along with them because they're restricting access to cannabis or pricing them at, at you know at, at astronomical level. Those people don't really belong in the human race. Yeah. Well, I um, used the it's, it's, CBD when I was in Can- uh, Canberra. Didn't help with the pain, but the swelling in my knee went down. Uh, yeah, what uh, people have to realise, yeah. the major cannabinoids have overlapping but distinct actions. Yes. Now, in the longer term... See, THC gives more or less immediate pain relief. If you yes. vape some THC or smoke some, you know, half an hour later, or if you eat it maybe an hour and 90 minutes later, you'll get some fairly reliable pain relief. But with the CBD, because it's disease modifying, yeah. because of its a, a anti-inflammatory action, over a period of, say, three weeks of constant ingestion, the pain would start to abate yeah. because you've addressed the underlying inflammation. Yes. So that... Statement of yours needs a little bit of qualification. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. It's a, but to me, it was the swelling went As down. As an acute yeah. dose, CBD won't generally provide pain relief. No. It's no. not, strictly speaking, an analgesic. No. But it is what you call a disease modifying agent. Yeah. Well, I didn't feel any okay. effect whatsoever from the CBD. And um, I didn't. Because people have different reactions, right? Yes. I mean, I've been supplying CBD dominant oil, and we don't just talk about CBD. Because yes. we're all using whole plant extracts, and that's very, very important. I'll give you a small example. I was contacted by one of the doctors who were in charge, in fact, of the um, cannabis program at Prince of Wales Hospital for yes. children with epilepsy. And they were, they were treating this little child who's got afflicted with a terrible genetic type of epilepsy. 
Yes. Uh, and they, they got up to 400 milligrams of CBD, of this big pharma mono CBD, and they had no impact on their seizures at all. Yes. We stopped what they had given and started titrating from a very small dose. You remember the start low dose slows and just yes. building it up. And we found a sweet spot at about 20 milligrams, which is like, what is that? Is that 20 times less than they were giving? Yeah. And we got much better results. Yeah, yeah. Right? They really don't know what they're doing. And worse than that, they're not prepared to learn from others that are. Yes. For instance, this same doctor, I sent an email and said, look, this kid now is doing famously. Everyone's happy, the family's happy, the, kid, the other the siblings, you know, getting more time with their parents because they're not spending it all on this one. Um, you know, there's lots of others like that. Why don't you send us your problem patients and we'll show you how to manage them? Yeah. You know, with the right diet, with the right sort of um, organic cannabis, no untake so far. Yeah. What so is the untang- what is the solution they're suspended in? That's suspended in. Which is one? It, what's the oil that you put it into? Oh, I mean that's that's not the critical factor. I mean, on the whole, I tend to use olive oil for a number of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And firstly, oil is not the only way to do it. I mean, everyone's hung up on oil. Yeah. Right? And then, also, too, they don't even define the terms properly. I'll just go through a few terms. Yep. Say, for instance, you take an alcohol extract with a cannabis packet. You end up with a tincture, right? So you end up with the cannabinoids in an alcohol. Yes. If you then evaporate it, you end up with a resin. Yeah. But if you heat it, you end up with a hash oil. Yep. But equally, if you take the resin and then dissolve it in, say, olive oil or MCT oil, people also call that hemp oil, right? So yep. there's two different versions of it. Yes. The resin is really the pure product, yeah. the, the concentrate, as it were, and oil is then it's got a carrier. Yeah. I used to use uh, MCT or a medium chain triglyceride, yes. but I stopped for a number of reasons. Now, firstly, all the MCT is manufactured by big corporations, especially a Winker, which is an ammunition corporation, yeah. and it's much used by bodybuilders, and there's occasional shortages of these. The important thing is the solubility, and this olive oil is grown in Australia. It's good, clean, organic product. Yeah, it's there's no reason not to use it. We're not supporting an American transnational arms yeah. company with a manufacturer of MCT. But oil is not the be all and end all, right? Yes. There's so many different ways to ingest cannabis. One of the things I get people, I suggest, especially if they're home growing, just dry the buds, put them in an airtight container, and store them in the freezer. That way they're in the raw or acidic form, the THCA or CBDA, yes. or CBGA for that matter, or they're all in the acidic form. And in many conditions, they work with a superior result at a smaller dose. Yes. In certain conditions, probably more so in pain conditions, you probably benefit from at least, you know, at least half of it being decarboxylated. Yes. But for instance, you could put a bud into a hemp seed smoothie yeah. Just combine hemp seed berries, coconut water, into a smoothie and then just add the bud directly in. So there's no actual absolute need to extract the oil. Oh, because okay. in any yeah. extraction process, there's a loss. Yes. There's also yeah. a contaminant with solvents. Yes. If you use just the, the dried flour, right, just dropped into a smoothie or in any other way ingested, uh, that, that's for people's consideration. What have people have? suits them in different ways. Yes. So it's not one size fits all, but it, it certainly, it's horses for courses. Yes. And, um, yeah. Well, and I have tried cookies in the past. Well. I've tried cookies What's in that? the past. I've tried cookies in the past for pain, and they worked. And, um, yeah. It, but it's sort of, finding out how to access it is one of the biggest problems that I've found. And the fact that any doctor can prescribe, and they're not. That, to me, is... They're the... not because of the volume of paperwork, and it's yes. still seen as somewhat distasteful and onerous, and yes. not quite being sort of fair to the core, you yeah. know, with uh, letting the team down, sort of going for the hippie shit, yeah. you know, that sort of stuff. Um, and the ones that are doing it, there's often fairly, uh, what would I call it, venal, venal uh, motivation in that they get their, their bloody fees they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to dose. They don't yeah. know how to mix THC and CBD and the others. They yeah. don't know about whole plants. Yeah. You know, but yet they're having to just sit there and sort of take their bloody money from yes. poor, sick people that yeah. could spend that money on a lot of other things much more profitably. 
it seems... So the whole thing, the farmer situation is a shambles. Yes. And the only bright light on the horizon is the fact that the courts are now starting to lighten up yes. on the whole business. Yeah. And the more we run medical necessity defences in the court, yeah. I think even the police will get it into their thick heads that busting people who are obviously medical users yeah. is not going to result in convictions and they're going to waste a lot of time and have egg, egg on their face at the end of the day. Yeah. My, actually, talking about convictions, my biggest uh, fear is when I do go on the, uh, the medication that I'm going to get pulled over and everything. But the thing is, it's sort of like I've never, ever taken medications and driven my car uh, if I was affected. Never, ever done it. I've been on endone for, since I was 18 years old. And um, never, ever gone out there and driven my car it's sort of, if I'm affected which pretty much doesn't affect, it only ever takes the edge of the pain away anyhow, because I won't go to a high dose. And um, But I've never known cannabis to last, any effect of cannabis to last any longer than four hours. And um, yeah, they've got this 24-hour rule, and I think that's the biggest joke uh, on the well, side. Well, no, it's not a 24-hour no, 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 rule. Yeah. Um, that's just a guideline. I mean, if you test... Some people, for instance, say you, you've been, uh, say you, you, you spent a month's holiday in Morocco and you smoked yes. two bucket loads of hash and things. Yeah. And then you came home, you haven't, you haven't had a smoke in, say, a week. Yeah. But then you go on a weight reduction diet. Yeah. Right, that can mobilise cannabinoid residues. Yeah. And show positive results. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah, we all know it's got nothing to do with impairment. It's an act of malice. By a bunch, I th we believe started with a bunch of retired Victorian cops who yep. wanted to make profit from selling these sticky tests. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an act of bastardry of the highest order. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of. Um... What we want, though, Tony, and the solution's simple: go back to impairment testing. Yes. I mean, oh, now yes, we definitely. can probably do it a, a little more intelligently than making you walk a chalk line. Oh, you touch your nose and touch your finger. Well, you know, there's little video ways of the same reflex time. Yes. And that takes everything into consideration. Poly drug use, hangover from previous drug use, fatigue, all sorts of things. It's impairment that's important. Yes. And the sooner we swap to an impairment-based system, the better it is for everyone. Yeah. Oh, well, I know that um, when I was uh, younger, you couldn't, I couldn't work on anything fine motor skill. Um, while I was doing it, while I was off my face, uh, you just couldn't do it. It sort of, um, I never touched my electronics because I knew I'd screw it up, and um, even cleaning a pipe was hard. And but what, um, what sort of substances are you talking about? Um, I was just making um, bud back in those days, and, and a lot of the time it was but only leaf. But to yeah. to actually turn around and like even cleaning my pipe back in those days you couldn't do, I had to wait an hour before it, I could it do sound, it it sounds like you're overdoing it if you don't mind a bit of criticism there Tony. it sounds like you're overdoing it oh no no I was specific. just back that was Hang me on, in the old, old days mate <laughs> yeah but yeah, you're right I think you know you say when did you stop smoking you said when I couldn't yeah <laughs> you uh, couldn't get the lighter organised no yeah. that's not the way 94 got, 94 this, was I, this I is stopped more, smoking this yeah. is more yeah. And you get much more enjoyment from the pot, and your deals last a lot longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you follow that principle, and sometimes a small, a moderate dose of well balanced cannabis yes. can actually enhance people's fine motor skill. You know, you ask musicians, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> you know, artists, for that matter. There's all sorts of uh, creativity that can be enhanced by the moderate use of cannabis. I'm. I'm uh, I was always better at my art when I painted, um, when I smoked. Yeah. If I was a painting, I'd be absolutely incredible. And yet I get blocked when I'm not. It's sort of, but it's that's life with me. It's sort of, I'm used to that. Uh, we're going to have to watch this. Uh, we might have to take a break in uh, 10 minutes, folks, uh, while we restart the uh, stream. Uh, sorry, the conference, because we've only got a little time limit within it. So, um, Is this, you know, anyone, anyone's got particular interest in what we're saying? Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Greg has said, welcome, Dr. Pot. Uh, go okay, we've got a troll in the room somewhere. I'll have to wait for somebody to go and bounce on them. 
uh, it should be legal and we can just grow our own. Yes, that's very um, thing. Uh, Gregor said, I suffered from Crohn's disease for many years and found cannabis to be the only drug to actually help settle the stomach pain and relief and weight gain. Uh, I used to work with Greg in the uh, old days. THC and me don't agree before when it was homegrown and uh, didn't smoke. If you open up the um, the actual um, cannabis protest stream, you'll see the chat in the stream. Every would not doesn't matter what whether they're D Live, whether they're on my other channel. Everything gets brought across into um, the chat. So that's a good thing oh, I use Restream so everything comes across into the chat so you can actually read the chat yourself um, and every single it's channel. Not, it's not, no, it's not, it's not cooperating with me, so I'll just hear it from ah, you. No worries. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Crohn's disease, you've got, you've got here some chronic, severe, relapsing disease yeah. which is not always life-threatening but it can be bloody life-destroying yes. right, in intense misery. And uh, a, a large number of people now have found long-term relief from relapses with uh, with regular cannabis use. There's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, That's just one of the many, many conditions that are significantly cannabis responsive, where other drugs really have no major impact at all. Yeah. Well, yeah. to me, and... It just highlights their bastardry. And look, the bleat, the bleating of the allopaths is all we need more study. You look at half the drugs that are coming in now, and this since I've been registered back in 2005, stopped really practicing in hospitals and things. Yes. I mean, I don't recognise half the drugs that people turn up with now. Yeah. And you can't tell me they've been properly tested, because to properly test a drug, you want to know what its safety is over several years. Yeah. So yeah. you can't fast track a drug because you're paying a sort of bit of buck sheesh to your mate in the FDA or, or EPA or whatever other agency is doing it. Yeah, all on right. blood I mean, pressure they, meds. They use the public as guinea pigs yeah. after that to yeah. see where the side effects are. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all pretty intolerable. I'm on blood pressure meds now, unless you say I now have to lead a celibate life because of it. And, um, but it's they don't tell you these things when you get first go on the drug. They just say, oh, no, we'll put you on this one, put you on that one. I've had so much dramas with statins, um, it's uh, I've got a lot of uh, plaque in my arteries. I've got blocked arteries in head, brain, neck, and yeah, everywhere. And um, but, uh, that's, look, you you brought up statins, Tony, and yes. I mean that I won't say it's one of my pet topics. It's one of my not pet hates. It's one of my major hates because what we've got here is blatant scientific fraud with people suffering as a result. Now the statin drugs just so people aren't I think, think the Lipitor and all, all the other drugs that are supposedly designed to bring your cholesterol down. Well, just take a minute to get this clear, but this is a big issue, right? Cholesterol is so important to the human being. You can't live without cholesterol. And if you don't eat enough, your liver manufactures it because it's needed in making cell membranes, it's needed in making the sex hormones, yeah. the health of the testes, over it. You need the cholesterol. Yeah. Now, what the statin drugs do, they poison the enzyme systems in the liver and they're, they're basically a metabolic poison. Yeah. And the side effects of muscle weakness and atrophy and uh, accelerated cognitive decline are very, very real. Yeah. But further than that, it's not by fiddling with the numbers. They don't really prevent um, vascular disorder because it's based on a false premise. The premise is called the cholesterol hypothesis, yeah. which means the higher your serum cholesterol is, the more likely it is to push into the artery walls and form these plaques. But the reality is, it's only if the cholesterol is rancid that they actually incite an immunological reaction with this cells called macrophages, yeah. which then secrete things called cytokines, which then produce the plaque. Yeah. So the message is you have a cholesterol of eight, but because you're eating lots of berries and, and green sort of vegetables and things like that, You've got lots of antioxidants and none of that cholesterol is rancid. Yeah. And you might have a cholesterol four because you're on the statins and you're forcing this level down. But yeah. you live on McDonald's and, and French fries, things like that. And all of that is rancid. You yeah. have your heart attack at four, whereas the person with eight won't. Yeah. So they're operating on false paradigm. Yes. Yeah, right? And it's worth tens of billions of dollars annually 
Yeah. And the, the side effects are huge. Yeah. I've had to treat seven patients with major muscle weakness yes. due to the stents with yeah. no appreciable beneficial survival effect. I jumped into the ocean bars at Newcastle and um, felt like I'd broken a leg and turned out that every muscle in that calf muscle had separated. And I mean separated, oh, yeah. physically separated. It took me six months. You were on the statin drugs, were you? Yeah, I was on Lipitor. Um, they've yeah. had put me back onto the Rovastatin after trialling me on many, getting uh, the muscle weakness. They put me on a low dose of the Rovastatin, and I've only just... Listen, look, with your history, and yeah. I'm not really okay with all the, the intricacies of your history, I really think we should have a long talk off air yeah, and, and try and get you into a better state of health. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. I look around, and the only thing I see is an increasingly overweight population yes. with increasingly um, frequent presentation of serious diseases at younger and younger ages. Yeah, when I, I when I, I quit mean, smoking, I gained all mine. Hey, eh? when I quit smoking, I gained all mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, you, you, health. You have to earn good health. Yes, and you earn it by healthy living, right? Yep. I mean, people are forever asking me, oh, is this healthy or is that healthy? I said, well, you can't look at individual things. You've got to look at the net effect, right? I mean, it's like a seesaw. On one side, you're doing healthy healthy things, like good deep breathing and fresh air, getting exercise, drinking clean, unfluoridated water, drinking, yes. eating a lot of fresh whole foods, you know. On the other hand, you can have indulgences. You might smoke a few cigarettes or have a bit of piss on the weekend or something like that. That's okay if the overall balance is positive, yes. right? But you can't be habitual in your habits because, you know, the, the scales weigh against you and, and you suffer the consequences. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. You do. You definitely suffer the consequences. I've found that anything you do when you're young, you're going to suffer when you're old. Trust me, you, all those idiot mistakes you make when you're young, the pain hits you when you're old. So be careful. Not guys. necessarily. Yeah. Oh. No, not necessarily, right? Like a lot of the parameters are decaying with age. Things like glutathione, yeah. which is a major intrinsic antioxidant system, yeah. that starts to wind down in time yes. because all the resilience of youth is gone. Yeah. But it's not to say you can't. I mean, the, the big specialty of the future is regenerative medicine, yes. where we're looking at in middle and later age actually regaining, if not all, at least much of the youthful vigour that we used to experience. Yeah, that's what and I'm trying to do. Is, yeah. now, hang on, the good news is it is possible, right? Yes. I mean, a lot of the things that I was taught at university in the 70s are demonstrably wrong, but they were taught with such confidence. Like, you know, how they used to teach the world was flat and we were the centre of the universe and the sun went round us, things like yeah. that. Oh, the brain can't regenerate. Oh, nerves can't repair. Of course they can. It yeah. seems like even up to your senior years, your brain can regenerate new cells as long as it's properly nourished. Yeah. That's the right. only reason I've said, been so successful after my stroke, because they said the brain had already made new pathways. Yeah, the plasticity of the brain yes. is only really being discovered now, but the message is a loud and clear message. The brain is, a, is an adaptable organism, and as long as it's well fed, yeah. right, it, can, it can recover from serious serious issues and function at a reasonable level yeah and um we are going to have to take a brief break in a second as soon as i fix this up uh because and we're the, uh, we're actually at that stage of the day when we've got to um Change something, i.e. swap yeah, the listen, screen. Tony, yep. I'd, be, I'd be interested in if there's any questions that people have. Yes, you know? yep, yep. Um, so when we restart, we'll, we'll do that. Yes, that's what I was going to say. If, now, if anybody wants to call in, uh, that Uber conference address is all you need to come in. You do need to sign up and to Uber conference. Um, so you just go to uberconference.com, you sign, sign up and then you just then retype in that room or copy cut and paste it type it in and you can actually ask dr um andrew cavallaris any questions if you wish uh or you can ask via chat um so um, but we've just quickly got to end this conference for one sec 
and get him to call back in so that uh, we can keep this going. So I'm going to shut it down now, Andrew. If you call straight okay. back in, um, we should be able to get it going straight away again. Okay, then. All right, no worries. I'm hanging it up now, and um, I'll start the new conference straight away. Okay, folks, um, as I said, that was uh, Dr. Catalaris. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make the second half a question and answer. Now, any of you want to ask Dr. Catalaris a question, uh, please feel free to either call into the show um, or to simply... Um, yeah, and my webcam's still not working for some unknown reason, not being recognised. So just going back into our conference call. And, uh, yeah, so if you've got any questions out there, and uh, just This free wait. conference call is provided by Uber Conference. Just waiting. You are the first participant on this Uber conference. Just waiting. Please hold while we wait for the others to join. Just waiting for Dr. Catalaris to come back in. So, um... Actually, I've got to invite him in now. That's right. Sorry. I'm just going to invite him back in. Wait a second, folks. Oh, no. That's not it. Ah, mackerel. Inviting myself. Nice trick. Uh, Doc, if you are out there and listening, you please feel free to call back in. I'm having a bit of an issue here for some unknown reason. Doesn't. Ah, there he is. Are uh, you there, Doc? Andrew. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, mate. Yes, you are. Okay. Now, guys, yes, okay. if you've got any questions yes. out there, um, so I'd, it's a bit hard to tell. I'm sort of watching to your screen. I've, somehow I've managed to convince Uber, uh, not Uber Conference, to uh, convince Restream to stream to both both my channels <laughs> it must be freaking it out i think it sort of um, now any if any of you have any questions please feel free to ask and i'll see if uh uh okay no that was before um when i was homegrown when it was homegrown i could smoke and get yeah oh the paranoia there's a par actually while i'm waiting for some questions there's a paranoia um come into it anyway. Yeah. Uh, with with it's the medical well stuff. Described, it, it's well described in the literature yeah. that a excessive dose of THC unbalanced by CBD and other cannabinoids can in a especially in a naive user, but yeah. also in a threatening or an unfamiliar um, and uncomfortable environment can create feelings of paranoia. So, I mean, that's largely as a product of being illegal. Yeah. Like, no one would worry about getting busted if pop was legal, right? Oh, so okay. it's clearly a reaction to the prohibition. Yeah. It's not an, in, an intrinsic pharmacological effect of cannabis. I mean, you go and smoke some pot in a safe environment, you just say, oh, the cops are coming. Yeah. Because they're not, right? So, yeah. But at a simple, at a broader level, if the cannabis is balanced, that means there is a range of different cannabinoids, including CBD in the mix. Yeah. Those sorts of um, perceptions tend to occur much, much less often. Uh, okay. So it's a product of unbalanced cannabis. It's yeah. a product of the prohibitionist laws that we have in place and often exacerbated by an excessive dose in an uncomfortable environment. Yeah. Uh, they also resolve fairly quickly, so they're not the harbinger of any serious psychiatric malfunction. Yeah. Oh, I've just had a question from Mixer. I didn't know, for some unknown <laughs> reason, Mixer's not coming through to the Restream system, but wanted to know how many cannabinoids there are. Ah, uh, people go on and on, and you hear these sort of nods, oh, there's 200 or something like that. In reality, there's about a dozen in reasonable quantities. And there's really only about five or six in high quantities, right? Yeah. So when you've got something like, say, what you call a metabolic or a synthetic pathway, like the, the most people aren't aware of this. It's very interesting, actually. You know, when you smell something like pine or lemon or 
or bergamot or rosemary or any of those things, the reason you smell anything is because it has these little chemical entities called terpenes. Yes. Terpenes are what gives the world smell, really, natural smell. Yes. And, um, or scent, I should say. The cannabis plant is the only, if not one of, there might be some other somewhere, the only that we're aware of is able to combine these two, any two terpenes to form a cannabinoid. So a cannabin, a cannabinoid is a di-terpene molecule that's synthesised by joining two terpenes together. Now, once you've got a starting molecule, so you might have something like CBG or cannabidiol, and it gives rise to the other. So you start with a common precursor, and there's a lot of intermediate precursors which can't really be considered stable cannabinoids. Yeah. Right? I mean, in reality, the ones we're most interested in is obviously THC and CBD. Yes. But the ones of next interest are the THCV, the cannabidivarin is of great interest. Um, that's And the, the we, we don't know much about the CBD. The is, CBD there, is there one thing. called MC12? But, MC? What's that? MCT? MCT, I'm looking at something here, it says MCT. MCT? Yeah, what's MCT? Medium chain triglycerides, that's what's in coconut ah. oil, olive oil. Oh, okay. Hey? Yeah. All right, no worries. Yeah, well, I'd, that must be, sorry, I better read on. <laughs> I was reading something. I just said, it just saw, it said MCT something. Um, yeah. Did know. that answer the question? Yeah, it did. Yeah, so, I think it yeah, did. There's yeah. really a dozen yeah. to be bothered with, but you yeah. know, someone will give you a much higher number than that. But they're transient. They're metabolic transients. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we've got enough complexity uh, I, uh, sorting out, you know, the top 12, let alone even the top six for that matter. Yes. And that's enough to start with. Now, you're... Uh, we don't have to sort of... Sorry. Hey. Eh? Sorry. You, no, that's it. All right. Um, now, you're also um, one of the seniors up in the Marijuana Party, aren't you? The Hemp Party. The Hemp Party? Uh, hemp Party? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm the Senate candidate for the Hemp Party oh, in New South Wales. Yes. Yeah. And we were very gratified um, at the last election last year, where without spending any time or money, we were just putting our toe in the water to see what level of support there was in the community. Yes. We got 2.6% of the vote. Yeah. That's with an expenditure of nothing. Now, Clive Palmer expended $60 million, and I think he got 2.8% of the vote. Yeah. So the Hemp Party, even without being sold, attracted more votes than all the other minor parties combined. Yeah. So we took that as a great encouragement, yeah. and we're certainly going to build on that and make a serious running for a Senate position yes. um, next year, I think it is. Yeah. So and uh, we hope for people's support in that area. Yes. We'll certainly get a lot more active and our, our discussion will be much more focused yes. on what the Hemp Party stands for yes. and what we hope to achieve with it. Maybe I but can get you back on another show and we can go right into the Hemp Party. Um, do a yeah, whole that show would be valuable. A, yes. The critical issue though, Tony, I'll just get this in. The critical issue that separates us from the other parties is that there's a belief in this country that you can't have employment while you're preserving the environment. So if you're going to be a bloody greenie and lock up all the forests and things like that, it inevitably leads to low employment. We want to break that way of thinking, that paradigm of thinking, and introduce the idea you can have the ecology and employment. Yes. If people are working in truly sustainable, productive industries like you would with a plantation, yes. where you're producing foodstuffs with all the runoff there to sort of non-dairy milks and yogurts and and all the rest of that, yeah. you're looking at the textile ones, you're looking at the hand-creep building materials, you're looking at the plastics, the spin-off industries could easily generate many billions of dollars a year, yeah. not only in direct consumer use, but in import substitution yes. and in export enhancement. It could really turn the country around. I've already started looking for a um, hemp solution to the plastic that I need, because I need Nylon 66 to make my product because it's the best plastic there is. Because uh, I'm a... Well, what product's that, Tony? Uh, it's the ZS. So I, that, I can't say what it is because it's part of the advertising campaign at the moment. Um, but it's made of a plastic called Nylon 66, extremely flexible. It's one of the strongest plastics out there. And... Um, well, yeah. I've seen a, a didgeridoo made of hemp plastic. 
Yeah. And just as a demonstration, someone swung at full force into a telegraph pole. Yeah. And it made no impact on the digital, left a little in, impression on the telegraph pole. Yeah. Right. Um, hemp plastics can be made to any specification. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right? That's and why I'm looking like into it, them. Hey? Yeah, that's why I'm looking into them. So. Yeah. It's, um, it'd there's be nice to say. Ways, no, there's many different ways of making hemp plastic, right? Yes. You can either make it in a conventional way with resins and hardness and things. Yeah. But the magic of the hemp plant is that if you get a whole stalk and you grind it up to sufficient fineness in a special industrial grinder and then add water and pressure, it sets like a paper mache and it's rock hard. Yes. Right? Yeah. It, and it, it's got no foreign chemicals. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable how easy it is. Yeah, it can be made into absolutely everything. And um, yeah, now, basically. on everything. April 20, you guys have organised the big protest, which I've sort of added on to, um, which is uh, 420, I forget the name of it. Um, who, who, who's done this? What the um, hemp, hemp party has done, uh, organised the 420 uh, thing at Parliament House. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm running, yeah, okay, I'll have to get up to speed on that. Oh, you sorry. Can tell me that's the case. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I thought maybe you would have been up to speed. I, I do apologize. No, I'm not, I'm not one of the organisers. I'm, I'm the Senate candidate. Uh, um, I mean, okay. It's a bit like yeah. this. There's, there's the backroom people that do all the hard work, create the banners, get yeah. the ideas, do all the organisation. Yeah. And then the candidate swans in and says a few clever words and hopes to be <laughs> You know, that's the way it is. I'm one of those. I mean, okay. <laughs> You know, I, I don't do the hard work. I don't yeah. just do the loud mouth at the front. Yeah. You know, when it comes to the politics, and yeah. I admire the people who do do the hard work because yeah. there's no progress without it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, I've been uh, now. I've invited. Uh, I'm invited the minister. I'm hoping to get the minister for health on the next show, and uh, have a yarn to him myself and see what he's doing. A pink pig just flew past my window, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's two of them, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, they can be like that. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I, I know, no, I know that, but um, I will, I will keep on trying until I can get him on the show because yeah. I'm not going to rest until cannabis is legal now. Because Listen, I, while I'm, we're talking about ministers, yes, right. I mean, you've really got to look at the way our political system works, right? Yes. You can get to be the health minister in charge of a sort of a a, a deck of billion sort of uh, dollar portfolio, yeah. many, many billions of dollars and affecting the lives and well-beings of the whole population. And you know nothing about your portfolio. It's been given as a political reward for your Tony. Yes. But it's ridiculous having people with no expertise basically in charge of departments. Yes. Yeah, no, right. I've, it's, I've it's seen that over the years. Yeah. Hey? I've seen that over the years in my dealings with Canberra. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, it's strange. It's that a lot of people think we've got a good system. But one thing that pisses... Actually, talking about the political system, one thing that pisses me off is they uh, get us to use pencils. I think that's the most uh, ridiculous thing. I reckon everybody should always take a pen with them when they go to vote because um, a pencil can be changed. A pen can't. Uh, yeah, but, uh, that, I mean, that's that's not the way our, our system gerrymandered. It's massively gerrymandered, yeah. but not by rubbing out pencil marks and changing them. Oh. Because, yeah, you know, the things are pretty well scrutineered. You know, when the boxes are open, there are people from all sides looking at it. They gerrymander in many different ways. Yeah. I mean, what we'd like at some stage is you actually get a voting. Instead of having this clumsy paper system, Yeah. Um, we actually have ATMs. At, at voting places, yeah, and people get a voting registration card, and they use that like an ATM to vote. Yes, you know, with the appropriate safety mechanisms. Yeah. Yeah. But that way, it would open us up to citizen-initiated referenda. Yeah. Now, the argument against having citizen-initiated referenda is that it's too expensive and all the paperwork and all that. But if everyone's got their voting card, and you know, within this week, you give your opinion on, you know, should we go to war in Iraq or you know. Yeah. Should John Howard be sort of cut up for Burley? The real as democracy. For his yeah. misdeeds or something like that. Real democracy. And yeah. everyone after work, whenever they just go and enter their vote. You know, yeah. the Liberal Party motto, I mean, up in the North Shore at least, used to be vote early, vote often. 
Yes. Because, yeah. you know, you were just ruled off the paper book with no cross-checking. Yeah. So it was very easy for people to vote more than once. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, having an ATM-style, you know, voter card um, would streamline the system, cut down the costs, and also make it much more usable and much more truly democracy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a joke, the system. I've, I've never liked it. It's um, hypocritical in some cases, i.e. the fact that Canberra politicians and they say, oh, no, it's the state. Trust me, they're using every little chance. And 10 to 1, they're sitting down there having a smoke themselves and having a laugh about the rest of Australia. And that's, that's my personal opinion. And... Um, and I think they are. It's, I'm pretty sure that they smoke just as much as we do. It's sort of um, the people out there that have tried it and have smoked. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not, a product, it's not a productive argument. I mean, yeah. they're probably much more likely to be sort of drowning in a sea of alcohol with the occasional stimulants. I mean, cocaine, things like that, much yeah. used by yeah. um, and House. In fact, one of the biggest needle exchange, if not the biggest needle exchange program, I was told, was running out of Canberra Parliament House. Serious? Wow. Uh, that's what I'm told. Yeah. You can do your own checking on that one. Yeah. But yeah, we're, actually, we're, not yeah. Doing, we're dealing with hypocrites. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Criminal-minded hypocrites yeah. that are prepared to sacrifice the lives and well-being and health of the population, right, yeah. for their filthy little bribes that they get from Big Pharma. Yeah. And you know, it's that. pathetic. What I find really pathetic, I mean, I suppose like I'm mean, any person, you could be tempted by, by you know, bribing and things, but they sell themselves, you know, for a couple of million dollars third-party finances and things. Yeah. You know, it's really sad how how little they care yeah. to, for the damage that has been done. Yeah. Yeah, and the influence you can buy with a bit of dirty money, that's really, really sad. Yeah, I know. It's sort of they. You think? Are there that, any more questions there? There's no one's got any. Um, any uh, CBD. Okay, hang on. No, sorry. Uh, is that CBD oil without THC? Is that cancer cell? Is that is cancerous? Are cancer cells? Um, is it cancer? Sorry. Cancerous. Hang on. Okay. Do you know about marijuana flinging cancer fighting? Flinging cancer cells. I don't know what he's, yeah, he's got. Star, star, oh. star. JH, what are you saying? Just type it. Okay, no, I, yeah. I can I can follow that question. Yeah. The question is, does cannabis have an anti-cancer effect? Yeah, pretty right. much. I and, think so. Yeah. Yeah. First, first things first. We don't like the word marijuana. Yeah. The reason I don't like it, it was adopted in the 1930s as a slang Mexican term, and the American government picked it up and used it as a way of confusing in the people's minds the difference between cannabis hemp, yeah. which they've been using for centuries, and this dangerous new drug from Mexico, right? even though they're the same thing. So yeah. we tend not to use the word in favour of cannabis. Um, does cannabis have cancer-fighting properties? Um, some years ago now, Professor Donald Tashkin, uh, he's an American epidemiologist, was contracted by the Nixon White House to prove, in inverted commas, to prove that cannabis caused aerodigestive cancers just the way cigarettes did. Yes. So that's cancer of the mouth, the pharynx, the tongue, and the lungs. Yes. So Tashkin was a fairly serious sort of epidemiologist, and he wasn't owned by anyone. He got his fee, and he did an honest study. He spent three years doing it, and in the end he reported that recreational cannabis users had 30% less cancer across the board than non-users. And evidently, Nixon flew into a fury and refused to publish the work that he paid for. Right? So that's at the anecdotal level. At the tissue culture level, there's ample evidence to suggest, and the animal model um, level, there's ample evidence to suggest that cancer can be slowed down or in some cases reversed by the judicious use of cannabis. The big issues come down to what... Uh, composition of cannabis and there does seem to be some fairly active whole plant extracts versus some fairly inactive whole plant extracts and it also comes down to the dosing yeah all right so there's a lot of complexities and anything I give now in terms of suggestions is only that a suggestion which will be modified in the course of further knowledge but yeah. at this stage the work that has been done indicates that combinations, whole plant extracts are better, there's no doubt about that. 
Yeah. But the combination of the THC and CBD component uh, works better than each one alone. Yeah. Right? yeah. And also, if you're embarking on something like a Rick Simpson treatment, if What's you've a... got a substantial amount of CBD on board, you can tolerate much higher doses of THC without being uh, dysfunctional. So yeah. therefore, you may have a better chance of actually achieving a therapeutic response. Yeah. One of the big unknowns in my mind, and one that we desperately need to move forward on, is whether THCA and CBDA, the raw forms, the unheated forms of cannabis, yeah. have a greater or lesser effect than the heated forms. Yeah. I know in epilepsy, a combination with a, a, a big component of unheated works best. But in cancer, we simply can't know these things. We actually have to test them. And the trouble is the patients we're getting now are usually on death's door. I mean, yeah. they've had their sort of fourth cycle of chemo yeah. and their tenth sort of exposure to x-ray therapy. It's really hard to get any meaningful data from them. Yeah. One thing I can say for certain, and we've repeated this time and time again, using cannabis even as an adjunct that's in addition to chemotherapy and other things like that enhances a person's survival yes. and yeah. quality of life. Um, um, my... It's probably synergistic. Hang on, let me finish this. Eh? Because the Yalop has put out, oh, don't use the cannabis, it'll reduce the effectiveness of the uh, chemo. But the reality is, if anything, they're synergistic. So there's, the results are greater than the sum of the parts. And in addition to that, it minimises and sometimes obliterates the dangerous <coughs> side effects. Like some of the chemo drugs cause, say, peripheral neuropathy. Yeah. Where people say this is worse than the bloody disease. Yeah, having a feeling like this ants crawling under the skin of your legs all the time, not a pleasant feeling. If you take the cannabis preparations before, during, and after the chemo, you can obliterate that peripheral neuropathy from forming. So it, it has a role in cancer in a range of different ways. Uh, it might be the first agent that's used. I mean, you know, we'd really like to have people with cancer that come to us not after they've been hacked up and irradiated and poisoned. Yep. They come to us ready for a lifestyle change and a major dietary makeover, as well as the initiation of cannabis therapy. Um, you know, there are plenty of documented cases of miraculous reversals of very, very advanced cancers, but it takes a combination of effort and will. Uh. And one of the biggest issues we have dealing with is the nocebo effect which is instilled by the allopathic doctors. Now, everyone knows what a placebo effect is. That means if you give someone an inert substance, but with good intention and good expectation, sometimes 30% of the therapeutic result, it can be due to the placebo effect alone, just the intention of doing it. In the same way, if you march into a doctor's office and he looks at you with a stern look and says, oh, yeah, you've got three months to live, you know, all your hopes and your aspirations for a longer life crash down and you suffer from the nocebo effect. Yeah. I mean, in many ways, it's like the high-tech version of the old Aboriginal pointing with a bone. Yeah. Right? And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. And having to undo that negative belief system often takes the most of the first part of the consultation before we can actually move to the more positive um, aspects of healing. Yeah. I have a mixer question. Is can uh, oh mixer because it's not coming up on the other chat. Um, is cannabis really addictive or is it not? It depends on the nature of addiction, right? If you're going to um, define addiction as in a, in the DSM manner as a excessive preoccupation with the acquiring and use of a substance, right, with the important proviso that is a deleterious effect on a person's life, yep. then that substance is addictive, often entailing a withdrawal syndrome at the end. Yep. Um, cannabis use can be compulsive, especially when it's co-administered with tobacco. Yep. So a lot of key people with what they call cannabis abuse disorder are really just nicotine addicts and they yes. made the mistake of mixing the tobacco with the cannabis and they have a cannabis dependency, sorry, a tobacco dependency masquerading as a cannabis dependency. Yeah. Having said that, I mean, what's addictive? What about sex? Is that addictive just because you want to have it sort of fairly regularly? Right? And you might not feel so great if it's not there. It doesn't arrive at the diagnosis of addiction. 
So I put it in the same category as sex, something you prefer to have, but if you don't have it, you're not going to fall apart. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. Sort of, I've never, ever, when I was younger, I used to go months without. Yeah, but I mean, I'll tell you a little little story from my own perspective. I mean, I'm a pretty, well, I was, I moved on to a sort of a country area and spending a lot of time doing hard farm work. And I found it really advantageous to, to smoke during the day, just little, little puffs regularly during the day to sort of fire the imagination and sort of keep the muscles moving and sort of more senior age, that sort of stuff. And when I was arrested, I thought, oh, fuck, this is, I'm going to be thrown in some shit hole with nothing to smoke. This isn't going to be very nice. But it di didn't, I was astounded how easy it was to just stop cold turkey. There was no withdrawal, no bad sleeping, no disturbing, anything like that. Yeah. Um, that's just my own personal experience. There can be a degree of psychological dependence yeah. for some people. If yeah. they're using it in a dysfunctional way, see, if you're using it to manage an anxiety situation or something like that, rather than using it to enhance a social situation, there's a difference there. But in no parameter of physiological definition can you say cannabis is an addictive drug. Yeah, that's... Right? With yeah. the provisos of the tobacco code of the codependence, and degree of psychological depends in certain circumstances. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of, um, I think I was just about to say, I think it's the tobacco that's the addictive part, always have done. And um, because I know when I quit smoking, it sort of, I start, it's because I was still um, occasionally having a smoke. And um, when it was somebody else's, I always, I, over the last few years, it's been OPs. I've never been uh, game enough to yeah. buy any. Listen, Tony, yeah. the other thing I didn't mention, yeah. Generally, the hallmark of an addictive drug is what you call the development of tolerance and yes. a need for dose escalation. It certainly applies to the morphine drugs. Yes. And right? um, yep. um, with cannabis, there's often a condition called reverse tolerance. So the more experience you get with cannabis, the more relaxed you are about the use of it, you can actually get the same effect with much lower doses because it yeah. sort of wakes up a memory effect. Yeah. So in that regard, it's sort of, it's, yeah... Also, by including CBD or just using CBD dominant cannabis therapeutically, it appears to be an anti-addictive substance. Like my experience when we were first using it, we've only had about sort of five to seven years of experience with it. But I was taking it. I was it's like having your fucking mother at the back of your head telling you not to do this or that. Mm -hmm. You're about to reach for something you shouldn't need. This little boy said, no, I don't have that. And you just can't <laughs> have it. Or, yeah, you want another. No, you've had enough. You know, it's like having the voice of your mother in the back of your head with the CBD. So it is, in a sense, anti-addictive, yeah. in my experience and the experience of many other people. Yeah. And it makes it easy to actually um, maintain abstinence. Yeah. Right? But that applies more to the very heavily CBD dominant. If you're talking about heavily CBD dominant, you can say without a shadow of contradiction, it's not only not addictive, it's anti-addictive. And with highly THC dominant, with no CBD, it can be somewhat psychologically addictive in certain people at certain times in their life. But it's not a feature in my experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know my sister, she suffered from, uh, uh, went through cancer. And um, without cannabis, she would have been most probably trying to top herself. It sort of, because um, I know most people in that stage with that cancer, um, I've had a few well, listen, Tony, that, that. that's sad to hear. Yeah. But listen, the experience in Colorado, and this should be taken on board by our political masters, within 12 months of legalising recreational cannabis in Colorado, there was a 20% reduction in suicides, and there was a reduction in domestic violence and fatal traffic accidents. Yeah. Right, because of substitution away from excessive alcohol yeah. um, and providing another form of sort of social release. And, you know, these are major things, a 20% reduction in suicide, because people are driven to suicide by desperation, by depression, by chronic pain, but, and, they, and by the side effects of the drug end of it. Yep. If these things can be managed, you know, gently, yes. it's an improvement for society all around. That's why when I, I watched that uh, 1930s uh, <laughs> show, like that um, the Evils of um, Marijuana, uh, You're talking about reefer madness. Reefer madness, sure. yeah, yeah, and um, the things that they made us made us out to do and all that. That's a that was a <laughs> like not. Yeah, I just can't describe. I can't put it, put it in words. I can't swear too much. But um, 
What yeah. I say there, Tony, it's very interesting, right? They say, oh, what a tangled web we leave when yes. first we practice to deceive, right? Yeah. Now, back in the 30s, cannabis was touted as a drug that unleashed sexual passion and sort of made women want to sort of have sex with big black men, things like that. Yeah. And uh, it's like a horrible thing. God, they do, time, they do that now. They do that now. Hang on, I, wait a minute, let me finish this little, little account. But over time, when that was found not to be quite as true as most people would have liked it to be, right, in the 60s, they re-condemned cannabis on the basis that it's sacked your libido. Yeah. So within the face of six decades, they banned it for two diametrically opposite reasons. Yes. Right? It just shows you, you know, in the war on drugs, the first casualty is always truth. But women aren't the big black men, no, mate. That hasn't stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Uh, okay. How's it going, Bluebeard? I'm going okay, <laughs> loyalty. Is there any other questions for Dr. Catalaris, guys? Um... Loyalty, you got any questions, darling? That chat room's gone quiet. Okay. <laughs> they get like that sometimes. Well, they presumably, they presumably know it all. No, no, right. actually, I mean, the only time that chat room the goes quiet, they in like... The yeah. If they're gone quiet in the, the chat room, it, might, it means street. they like... Yeah, sorry. The average Joe in no, the street? Who, who's going ahead? Oh, you go first. Me? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was saying the average Joe in the street knows more about cannabis and its uses in an honest way than um, our experts in Canberra. Yes. Yeah. Right? And what's, what's more, they actually care more. Yeah. Because we're labouring under a government, right, that's prepared to sacrifice the lives of our children and our adults for corrupt pharmaceutical corporations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right? It's yeah. bizarre that we actually tolerate it, and it's really a sad indictment of what we've become as a race, that we're actually being passive at a time when focused and determined action is actually required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I was going to say, when the chat room goes quiet, it means they're actually enjoying the show. <laughs> That's the only time I've I ever seen they've all gone off to sort of bloody mole bowl. Uh, oh yeah, they may they may be doing that as well, <laughs> but I um, it's sort of, oh no, a lot of a lot of there's some of my guys, uh, the one my moderators, they're all American. Uh, my friend is uh, Queensland. Uh, I used to work with that uh, with one of them, and um, everybody else I can't read their names because of the bloody restream bot never puts the stuff up. Because uh, it's a bit confusing sometimes where the chats are coming from and Mixer, I've got to check on Mixer every now and then because for some unknown reason, Restream's not putting the Mixer chat into the window. And um, But no, it's generally when they go quiet, I've found over the years, okay, we've got one. Uh, does CBD help nerve issues, with nerve issues? Okay. Nerve issues, you can mean different things by that. You can mean a functional nerve issue like an anxiety state, or you can mean a neurodegenerative disorder, say like Parkinson's disease or something like that. And the answer appears to be a fairly confident yes on both of those. But there's no doubt that CBD dominant, and remember when I, the proviso I always say, when I say CBD, I don't mean an isolated, an isolated CBD. I mean a CBD dominant whole plant extract. And we now have plants that grow high levels of CBD, tiny amounts of THC, but it's a whole plant still. So when talking about those sorts of things properly extracted, disease modifying, right? The beauty of CBD, and the irony is this was discovered by a bunch of Israeli military scientists some, some decades ago, where they found that if one of, they were looking for something to do with their soldiers who'd been head injured, say you've been hit by a concussive, concussive thing, of, you know, bullet or shrapnel, anything like that, but they found that no matter what the insult to the brain was, if you rapidly administered large doses of CBD, you preserve what they call the watershed area of the brain. That's the area of the brain that's damaged, but not yet not viable. So you might have a central area of death of the nerves, but around that is an area of compromised nerve function 
the CBD certainly prevents that progressing to total death. So it reduces the neurological damage, whether you're having a stroke or gas poisoning or a physical blow or anything like that. Uh, at the functional level, um, I mean, this is the ultimate irony. The Americans have found that if they give very large doses of CBD to schizophrenic people, it works just as well as risperidone, which is their sort of ace number one new butte sedating drug, but without the side effects, which can be very severe with risperidone. So after being accused for so long of causing schizophrenia, it's now apparent that large doses of CBD dominant cannabis can actually control the schizophrenia. So it's a sort of an ultimate sort of nail in the coffin for the drug war liars. Um, CBD also has a balancing effect on the immune system. I remember we talked very, very briefly about the endocannabinoid system. Yes. That's the master controlling system that controls your endocrine system and your neurological system and your gastrointestinal system. It's all over-regulated by this incredibly complex uh, micromanaging cell-to-cell communication through the endocannabinoids. Right? So yeah. what the CBD does, it actually, it's not like THC in many ways. THC binds directly to what they call the CB1 receptor and exerts effects through the CB1 receptor. CBD does what they call allosteric binding. That means it doesn't bind directly to the receptor but it binds to the side of the receptor and it changes its responsiveness. So if you have only a small amount of natural cannabis in your body called anandamide, you must have heard of that term. Mm. Anandamide is a Sanskrit word for bliss, but it is the messenger, it is the natural endocannabinoid that goes with the endocannabinoid system. Yeah. Right? So the CBD binds to the different receptors and enhances their sensitivity to anandamide. So you basically up-regulate your endocannabinoid system. But I spent a lot of time in consultations convincing people that in the long term, cannabis is very useful in the, in the short and medium term to enhance the function of your endocannabinoid system. But if you eat the right foods, and those right foods must include a generous dosage of hemp seed yep. for its omega-3s and, and uh, essential B-group vitamins and cofactors, your endocannabinoid system can function perfectly and you can generate all the cannabinoids or the anandamide you need and you can feel just 100% because of it, yeah. right? So we use cannabis therapeutically as a short and medium term and work on the person's diet and rejig their whole physiology so their endocannabinoid system works properly. And you yeah. feel, you know, as the word anandamide means, you feel most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I had a comment from one of the things I'd like you to actually hear the whole comment um, that um, the uh, Selenje uh, said that she loves the end, loves this interview. My dog has lymphoma and is currently on chemo. Uh, she said she's going to make some cannabis oil, but I'm only able to get bits and pieces from cannabis uh, of cannabis from different people, but um, I gather she wants to try it on a dog. Is that do you reckon it could help a dog? Oh, there's a vast veterinary use of cannabis across not only dogs but many animals. Oh, yeah, especially dogs. Um, but I mean, you can make oil if you want. But if you just get some trim left over from someone's growing operation, yeah. you can just mix that directly with the dog food. Yeah. Right? And you, you may be surprised at the results. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, the difference between us and dogs, for instance, a very slight. I'll just give you a few simple facts. Uh, you know, everyone thinks. Andrew, Andrew, things. Andrew, yeah. can we uh, take a quick break? Guys, we just need to restart our conference. Uh, oh, we, we've got six minutes left, Tony. Oh, okay. We haven't got much more time after that. Oh, okay. So no worries. All right. Yeah. No problems. Uh, what was I saying now? The. Um, uh, we're talking about dogs, uh, yes. uh, particularly. Not needing to make oil, you can use it directly. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've derailed my train of thought. It doesn't matter. Sorry. But yeah, no, no. It's not. It's not unusual for people to treat their animals with very. Oh no, I was telling you about the difference between the different animals. Yes. Right. I mean, most people would be shocked to learn that we've got eighty percent, eighty percent of our genes are the same as a fruit fly. 
Yes. See, all lies, because we probably came from a similar ancestor, all our metabolic processes are the same. When it comes to, to say, a chimpanzee, we share 98% of their genes. Yes. Right? So the difference between all the mammals is very small. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, the, the its use in pets is very, very well established. Yeah. And people are making all sorts of CBD uh, pet, pet supplements now. But if you don't have access to that, you can try just feeding the shake. Yeah. You know, grind it up a bit, mix it in with the food. Yeah. And you might be very pleased. Oh, okay. Just as a small aside, before they got chemical testing of uh, cannabis in the 1800s, because it was used therapeutically, they used to import Indian hash. Yeah. They used to feed it to beagle dogs to make sure it was strong enough. And they gave the beagle dog a certain weight and then made sure that it was staggering around. So they basically overdosed it yeah. to make sure that the hash was good. And that's how they actually tested biological testing. But yeah, it can have a therapeutic effect on animals very similar yeah. to can, the range of effects we have on people. Can I talk you into doing one thing for us, Andrew? Joining us in the... Um vote with your billy by making up a coke bottle billy without the comb just the yeah, no, no. and actually I'll send it to, and no, send I'll, it, I'll to, leave that to other people <laughs> and send it to parliament now. it's sort of yeah, yeah. um it's something else that i believe that if they wound up getting a lot of these things that you can see it on the screen there now guys that um vote with your billy and send it down to yeah. parliament house and uh, make sure you tell them what it is uh, um, Listen, Tony, over yeah. the years we've done all sorts of things. I sent a little baggie of hemp seed to every parliamentarian you know, <laughs> years ago on a, a, and a letter on a sheet of hemp paper outlining how the industry would be good for the country. Yeah. And 98% of them um, didn't answer at all and two said they'd call the cops on me. <laughs> right? I mean, we, we've stood there when we had sort of all these buds from the hemp crops and thrown them at Parliament House, you know. Yeah. And people lined up throwing buds at Parliament House. You know, we have to keep doing this, but we have to actually find our courage and yes. speak up yes. and stand our ground. Yeah. I right? think it's I about that time that we all did. Yeah. What's that? I think it's about time we all did because I'm sick of it. It's, I'm it's sick not of the about shit. time. Yeah. It's well past time, yeah. mate. And if we don't do it soon, there won't be time. Yeah. I, I mean, we're being left behind in the global thing. I mean, people are, countries are falling over themselves to legalise pot. Yeah. And, right? we, and uh, we're still running these bloody roadside saliva tests and you know, arresting people. And for what people don't know, we are the biggest manufacturer of cannabis medicine in the world. Australia. Is it? What do you mean? Australia is the biggest manufacturer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we make more cannabis medicine here than any other country. I don't know about that. Oh, I've been. Yeah, um, most of our cannabis medicine all goes uh, heads over to Canada and to other countries. Oh, yeah. I see. You're talking about pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah the pharmaceuticals. Yeah, the, yeah, massive. That's, that's just rubbing salt into the wound. Yeah. Where they're, make, they're growing um, flowers and sending them overseas, yeah. And Australians importing Canadian herb because it's been TGA approved or some nonsense. Yeah. No, it's it's a mad situation, mate. But this, uh, we'll leave it for now. Uh, good to um, get introduced to your listeners. Yep. And uh, we'll talk on other important topics in the future. Yeah, good. I'd love to have you back on the show, Andrew. It's been great, mate. It's sort of, it's oh, been man. absolutely incredible. And um, what I'll do, I'll give you a Tingles um, uh, maybe later tonight and or later today after I finish the stream. And um, we'll talk about when we can get you back on again. Okay, there's a lot of topics to discuss. Oh yeah, mate. I yeah, I got heaps of time, and uh, my listeners are the same way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good, good afternoon, everyone. All right, and yeah, thank you. Um, and I don't know. I think we just had one last thing come up on the screen. What did it say? Uh, do you have a website or clinic he could contact? Or Sarah Sel uh, Selinger. Best way is just through my email, which you've got there. Yeah. Or you can I'm, pass it on to them. Yeah, best way to make any inquiry is just through my email. Um, so you don't know. Andrew.Cavallaris at gmail.com. So it's okay to give it to them, okay? No, not a problem? Yeah, yeah, the email. All right, so can I, can I put it into the chat? Yes. All right, I'll put it into the chat, guys. So um, 
All right, uh, Andrew, we're almost out of time. Uh, I do thank you very, very much. And you still reckon I've got a hope in hell of getting the minister on, do you? Uh, <laughs> prove me wrong. I'd love, to, I'd love to hear what he's got to say. So would I. I think the whole of Australia would love to hear, and the whole world. And um, Because it's about the, time... The sad thing is, mate, from what I've met, I've only met him once and briefly, he's got yeah. nothing to say. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> at least make that obvious. <laughs> Um, oh, no, know, how, can he explain, how yeah. can he explain to parents that their children have to suffer and die yeah. because he's got an allegiance to pharmaceutical companies more than them? Yeah. But I'd... yeah, leave it on that note. Yeah. Andy, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, don't worry, I'm going to let him have his say just like I gave you the say. All right, no worries. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you very okay, much no. uh, for joining me. And it's been great. So I'm going to end the call now and I'm going to get back to the stream and uh, tell everybody about 420. So... Thank you, Dr. Catalaris, and we'll see you again. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, everybody, that was Dr. Andrew Catalaris, also known as Dr. Pot. Now, he has given me permission to give out his email to you guys uh, so that you can contact him in regard to his uh, clinic. So uh, this is his email. And um, that was very good of you, Doc, if you're still listening. And uh, there you go, Sal and Jay. Um, give him a yell. All right. So, um, and I'm definitely going to have to talk to you again, Doc. So I hope you are still listening um, about the other stuff because you might be able to put stuff in and put me onto some stuff that may help me. Because I am trying to lose weight and trying to get better and... Um, but now, talking about 420 people. Now on 420, the hemp party is going to be at Parliament House. If I can get... Oh, my computer's playing up for some unknown reason. Oh, I hate it when computers play up. So, um, it's some kind and someone has just subscribed. Um, so... Yes, so those of you out there that um, have enjoyed the stream, well, hopefully we will uh, have the minister on the uh, one of the live streams coming up. I will be live streaming as well as placing videos on this channel. Now, and uh, now that I know that I can also still stream to my main channel, I will still be streaming to my main channel as well. So those of you out there that... Um, do believe that cannabis should be legal in Australia or anywhere in the world. Now, this is a worldwide day, so let's make this a worldwide event and vote with your billy. Go and get a Coke bottle, a Gatorade bottle, a Fanta bottle, a soft drink bottle, anything. All you have to do is get a, go and get a drill, drill a 13 mil hole into the thing, push a piece of hose into it, pack it into a box and say, I'm voting with my billy on it and send it off to Canberra there. And it sort of, um, yeah, they can give them to the people going down there on 420 so they can make a giant one out of and glue them together. <laughs> they should. Because they, they, I reckon they're going to get quite a few. So vote with your billy guys and girls on uh, before 420 so that they know that we're serious. And But on 420, and I've got to call up the screen. Sorry, guys, I've got to go and get another image. And um, yes, so that... Um, oh, no, we just wanted a slideshow. And... Um, Vote with your billy. Take it down to Parliament House and or to wherever you're going to the local member's office because I reckon we should do it at every local member's office and vote with your billy and take them along. And, uh, yeah, so don't forget... There's the dates and the places that the marijuana party are protesting. But on the day, there's a lot of people that are not going to make it to the protests because it's either too far away or whatever. 
But see, every local member's office is only a short drive away from people because it's something you can get to in your car, you can jump on a bus and get to. Go to your local members. Our local uh, member here in Newcastle um, is Sharon Creighton. Um, so, yeah, go along to her office on 420. You'll see me down there protesting. And, uh, yeah, come along and join us. And if you've got a billy with you, make a couple and bring one along to the protest. Send one down to Parliament House. They've got to realise that we're serious, that this needs to be legal, folk. As he said, like, we need a referendum system with a card and to where we can vote on matters like this. Because, see, they don't want that because they know it's going to get legalised if they do it like that. So, but if we do something else and vote with our billies and make the billy up, send it to Parliament House and say, I'm voting with my billy. Legalise marijuana. Put a note in it. And, um, yeah. So, um... Either go along to 420 in the park. There are numerous locations for 420 in the park. And um, you can find a lot about that from the um, different sites in regard to that. Now, for those of you that uh, don't know where the minister's office is, that will be pasted into the description as soon as I finish this stream so that you can go along and know exactly where your minister's office is. Because the only way to get them to listen is they've got to know Australia is serious. We're sick of this shit. But the problem is this isn't just Australia, folks. This is all over the world. And all over the world, if we say with one voice at one time on the same day and maybe different hour, they've got to realise that this is happening. We know that the mainstream media is not going to cover this. We know that it's going to be YouTube channels and that will get the news out. And trust me, I will be reporting on my YouTube channel. And if you are a YouTuber out there, get out there. Go along to your local parliament house. Take a billy with you. Take a little... Um, I use a... I've got a Ryobi Plus 18... Uh, plus one, sorry, plus one with an 18 volt battery, uh, hot glue gun, I'm taking that along, I'm taking super glue, I'm taking everything, so we can glue these buggers together and make a giant version of it. Yeah, the Trojan, Trojan billies. And, um, but, yes, but definitely send one to your local minister. Because they need to know that we as, we, as Australian people and the people of the world, believe that cannabis should be legal. Trust me, I've tried it for only for one week when I'm in all this pain and I've got all this pain. And the oils do work. And yes, it was the pharmacology ones that uh, Dr. Catalaris was talking about, but they did still actually work. Um, I had to have the highest ratio of the ones that they make to make it work, but it did work, folks. And I actually reduced my endone from eight a day down to four a day. Um, and guess what? I'm currently back to six a day because I don't have access to it. I can't afford it. And it's my, my, D, my GP, all she had to do was fill out a form and but no i couldn't get her to fill out a form because yes she is uh, anti-cannabis it's not my fault she's anti-cannabis but this is the form again this is how easy the form is and how legal it is because they've made it so that it is legal but they don't sorry i didn't get the form up <laughs> i do apologize folks that's the form it's simple folks it's a simple form. It's like most probably take the doctor 20 minutes, 30 minutes, quicker than filling out some forms like from a Centrelink form even. There's less information needed on these forms, but they have to tell the people what's wrong with, they have to tell the TGA what's wrong with the person and everything. And, but why are doctors not prescribing this? They have the legal right to prescribe it. And the problem is the government's not telling them. The government's not training them. The government's not doing a damn thing. If you 
qualify, i.e., guess what? Chronic pain. How many of you are out there in chronic pain? You are legally entitled to use medically produced cannabis and become legal. You, are, you come under that criteria. There are 42 conditions. If you don't know what they are, ring the government. All you have to do is ring 62777777. You'll get through to Parliament House. Ask to speak to the Minister's office and ask them if they could tell you what the website is. But you can also go into the, all the pages and everything listed in the description and look for it in there. But you can ring them and ask them, why is your doctor not prescribing this drug? Hound, the only way to get a government to act is you've got to hound them. You've got to be at them all the time. The more people that get off their ass and say something and stand up and fight, something will get done. Because if they see that the Australian people are not going to take this shit anymore, they're going to have to do something. And they need to do something, folks. They seriously need to do something. And it's about time that this changed. It's about time that this shit stopped. It was made illegal because the big oil companies, you've seen that oil rig flashing up in the, the background all the time. It, there is reason that is there, actually, because... It's to show you that that's who killed cannabis. But also for cannabis can be turned into cannabis oil. So to have that oil rig has two meanings. But it was stopped by the big, oil, but also by the paper companies. And you need to look into it, folks. You really do. It's time that this was legalized worldwide. It's been used for thousands and thousands of years was given to Christ. You cannot make holy oil without it. That's right, folks. You cannot make holy anointing oil without cannabis. It's in the bloody Bible. They've changed, they changed the name. And over the years, it got called cannabis. It's been called hemp. It's got hundreds of names. And they illegalized one of them, marijuana, and made a big thing. Go and watch that movie. Go and see the movie. And uh, Reefer Madness, it's called. Type it into YouTube. You will get it up in a second. Go and watch Reefer Madness. Because that's the movie that killed cannabis. It was prescribed as medical treatments for years to relieve stress, to do everything. But then when they couldn't make their money anymore because they found ways to make cannabis produce a lot more efficiently. We would not have sailed the seas without cannabis. Did you know that one? And sorry, I have not been reading the chat. I just noticed it move. And um, yes, and if you're listening, Doc, everybody's saying in the chat, thank you, Dr. Catalaris from Loyalty. Uh, loyalty um, is one of my regulars on my main channel. So, um, I, for those of you on my main channel, yes, it's um, out there. But I've got to get my say out there in regard to this matter. While I'm, and while I'm here on this earth, it's got to be legal, folks. It's got to be legal. It's the, the drugs they have got me on are killing me. And they are. And I'm finding out that half the reasons that I am ill are because of the things that keep me from being majorly in pain. And I have a right to access a drug at a legal and not get arrested. But also to be cheap and affordable. It should be on the PBS. So those of you in the government, at least, minimum, put it on the friggin' PBS. It's a joke. You're hypocrites down there. You get to smoke it down there. We can't even get it for medical use. This is hypocritical. Yes, I know you're federal ministers, but you spend half your time in Canberra, and I bet you use that law to have as much fun as you can. And... Don't say that is don't because so many politicians have admitted over the years of using it and um, 
Yeah, you're just normal people like us that just think you're gods, and unfortunately some of you think you do. But I'm saying to you, Minister Hunt, I'd love you to come on the show. As you saw by today's show, I give you a fair chance to talk. I would like, and I am invi inviting you formally, Honourable Greg Hunt, would you please come onto my show? Would you please tell everybody the government's point of view on the cannabis issue? I'm not going to go away, Minister Hunt. And you ask anybody down there that uh, went back from the Shearer days when the ice cream truck protested around Parliament House, the man that started the Remove Kevin 07 movement, I didn't think it would ever work, by the way, but it did. I, I emailed enough people and it worked. And they emailed people and they emailed people. So one man can make a difference, people. Imagine what 20 million of us can do. Imagine what 100 million of us. There's 6 billion of us on the face of this planet. What the fuck are they going to do if we stand up on the same day all over the world? We have to do this globally, folks. We all need to stand up and say with one voice, Enough is enough. Legalise it now. Anyhow, folks, the, um, my voice is on its way out. And yes, I am rambunctious and I am tough because it's a simple form. Why aren't fucking GPs filling it out? It really is a joke, folks. And it truly is a joke. It's time. It's got to be legal. It needs to be made legal. And yes, Minister Hunt, you saw that Dr. Catalaris got to have his say, you're going to get to have your say, but then I'm going to ask you, Minister Hunt, will you answer questions for the Australian public and for the world even? Because some of my subscribers are from the world, from my other channel, and they come in and they ask the questions because I'm streaming to them at the same time. And hopefully if I can set the other set up um, and get another mic running, I'll be streaming to four YouTube channels at the same time. And um, now that I've found this little trick, I'm going to use it regularly. <laughs> but there's a lot of things out there. See, there's drug laws out there that are ridiculous. Then there's the actual law handbook itself goes right into drug offences and legalisation. Um, all those websites are going to be put into the thing. But I'm going to put the link to this form so that you guys can print this form out and take it to your GP and say... You know my conditions, Doc. Here is the TGA form. Could you please fill it out and send it away? I would like to use medical cannabis. I am going to give everybody the link to this form. In fact, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. If I can get this bloody mouse to work. Oh, Microsoft. I hate Microsoft sometimes. Buddy, Microsoft com surrogate virus. They got it rid of it. The, the NSA made them get rid of it in America, but we need to make uh, Australian government get rid of it here, by the way, because it's driving my computer nuts. Okay, everybody, if you use painkillers and you're sick of them, print this form out. Take it to your doctor yourself and force them. Say, look, doc, it's about time. I want off the other drugs. I would like access to medical cannabis. I know I qualify. Um, and there's 42. There are, I'm trying to find the other site that's got the 42 um, conditions. And I will put that into the description. I'm still trying to find it, actually, as you can see. I'm <clears throat> this is the virus. It's, it's a com surrogate virus, folks. It fucking drives me nuts. And it's got other little attachments to it, and then every single one of them is going at the moment. Yeah, that's why I can't fucking do anything. Because it they, they just takes over your fucking computer. It drives you nuts. They use every bit of your memory and the slow. It's a friggin' joke. Yeah. But... Yeah, so if you are a pain sufferer, folks, get that PDF and apply. But you can't apply. Your doctor has to apply. So take it down. 
Um, tell your doctor if they have trouble filling out the form, all they've got to do is ring up. There's details on the form, everything that they can use to contact the TGA or they would have the number for the TGA. It's your doctor's responsibility. You shouldn't have to go around and chase these things, guys. You, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. Uh, curious cannabis. Uh, I like your name. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I've been in IV. I've taken out as much of the harmful stuff as I can already. But unfortunately, uh, Windows has put a uh, found out that people were going in and changing permissions. Yeah, yeah sort of. You notice that on the screen. Um, but um, well, that's what I was doing. I was looking up something. Uh, what was I looking up? The 42... Ah, bloody Chrome help. What oh, Chrome help? See, it's taken over my computer already, folks. Just cannot change anything on my computer. Drives me nuts. Com surrogate, it's called. It's um, complain to Microsoft about it. It's a freaking joke. It takes over your computer. But no, those of you out there that... Um, do have a pain condition for god's sake take this form that and that i've just pasted in there take it to your doctor and say look medical cannabis is available this is the form for you to get prescribe it for me can you please send it to them even though i've had to go to another doctor but um i once i get my authority to get prescribed, I will then organise to get it transferred over to my GP. That way I'm, I'm not having to go to two doctors all the time. And I don't want to overload the poor doctor that, um, that I found that is not anti-cannabis. But there's a whole lot of information out there, folks. It's the information where to get medical cannabis. See, in October 2016, the Narcotics Drug Amendment Act 2016 came into effect in Australia, allowing doctors to legally prescribe medicinal cannabis to patients with specific medical conditions through the Therapeutic Goods Administration's Special Access Scheme. Um, and some people say there's a patient access problem, which it is. And the whole thing is, it's getting a prescription and it's it's got all the information in there for the for the doctors, but and it tells how the doctors to dose, how it tells the doctors how to do it, like minimal doses, like little doses at first, and then just slowly increase, and that's the way all the other places do it as well. So I'm finding out how they do it in America, and um, it's got to be legalised, folks. It really truly has, and it's time. Time is up, and. We've got to stand up with one voice and 420 is the day all over the world, folks. If you're listening to this video or you're watching it as a stream right now, stand up on April 20 and make a billy, take it down to your local ministers or your Senate man or whatever you call them in your country or your politician that is in power, not in power, but in the, that represents your local area, the one that you voted for. Um, go down and just send it to them. All it takes is a Coke bottle, a Fanta bottle, and then just drill a 13 mil hole into the bottle and uh, drop the hose into the bottle, make it look like a billy and send it and say, I'm voting with a billy. This is my vote, legalise marijuana now and send it to them. The governments around the world are not going to know what fucking hit them. And sorry for swearing, but it's true. They're not going to know what hit them. They're going to receive so many of these. Um, because I know at least 10,000 of them, like, we'll send, like, there's going to be 10,000, because I've got about 15,000 people on my thing, and I know most of you do everything. And um, so, yeah, send it to your local minister, your local um, representative, the Senate, whatever. Send to, I'm sending one to the Minister of Health. I'm sending one to my local representative. I'm sending one to the Prime Minister, to the Deputy Prime Minister. And I'm voting with my Billy. And I'm putting my name on it. And guess what? I'm not hiding my fingerprints. I'm putting a fingerprint on it. And um, so that, um, and that's my declaration, what I'm doing. I've show, showed everybody what it is. And trust me, it's just a makeshift one. You can't, oh, you could use it if you wanted to. I made it so they could. If they want to have a billy down there, I'm going to put that in the note and everything. 
So, yeah, oh, by the way, if you just add a bit of blue tack around the hose and make a little foil cone, you can use this to help you smoke your Billy in Parliament House. And um, so, yeah, they're just a bit of a joke. But the problem is, folks, we have ministers out there that are supposed to be out there helping us. They don't ask us for our vote. And I think Dr. Catalaris's idea of having that voter card where we can just vote on everything, it would be a true democracy, folks. It truly, truly would be a true democracy then because we don't fucking have one right at this moment and it's wrong. But once again, Minister Hunt, I will give you your fair chance to talk. I will give you your fair chance to have your say as you've seen by my interview today. And um, But I will be, it is a call-in show, Minister, and I will be asking people to call in. And I'd like you to answer their questions, if you're going. Because the Australian public wants to know. The world wants to know what Australia thinks. The world wants to know what your governments think. And trust me, I'm trying to get other politicians from other countries as well. I'm trying to get one certain one, for sure. I reckon he might even do it. I've sent him a tweet. <laughs> I bet you're all wondering who that is. Send him a tweet. and um, But the thing is, folks, medical cannabis needs to be legalised properly, officially decriminalised. The drug industry is going to shit themselves. That's why it's not legal. But the if it is legal, the criminal drug industry will shit themselves really big. Drug crimes are going to go down so quick. And with decriminalisation, the number of people going to jail for marijuana in America, yeah, is it? It's amazing. It's changed dramatically. Legalise cannabis. Legalise it now. You can call it marijuana if you want to make it sound evil, but we know it's not evil. Those of, you, the, of us that have used in the past and have tried the new oils know that it kills pain because I did not start needing morphine or endone until I stopped smoking cannabis. So please legalise it now. And trust me, four hours maximum to drive a car after you use it and those of us that have been on painkillers all our lives and have never driven cars when we've taken the damn things. Um, because, like, when I go on it, I will be using it. And I'll have to use THC every night. But I'll only have to use that at night. But the thing is, I'm talking to every politician. I'm not just talking to Australian politicians. I'm talking to every politician around the world. Right at this moment, I'm talking to royalties. Right, listen to me. Cannabis works. Cannabis does what we have. We have a cannabinoid system in our body, so we were meant to use this. This is God-given, for crying out loud, because you can't make holy oil without it. Exodus 30, chapter 22, I think, or it's around that, somewhere in there, there's a recipe for making holy oil. Holy anointing oil. Calamus, or that's the older name for cannabis. And trust me, you can find it. There's, it is listed. You've just got to find the right book that tells you what it was and how the names have changed. But um, it was once also called myrrh. The resin was called myrrh. And then they changed the resin name. And I don't know whether that was done back in the 1930s or whatever, but I'm pretty sure because myrrh has too many references where people are being found with myrrh, but it's cannabis. So, you tell me. Oh, no, sorry, folks, I took my glasses off and just noticed the chat rolling by. Uh, clean your computer. Yeah, I read that one. There's more during... There's, it's more than the drug industry. It's the uh, agricultural food industry, paper industry, fabric industry, building industry, fuel industry. Yeah, I know, man, I know. It's all of it. And um, the fuel industry should be worried. Yeah, I know. It's the same as the see rope. We used to sail mighty ships. Now those mighty ships with the giant sails, they were made from cannabis. The sails were made by cannabis. The ropes were made by cannabis. Man would not have progressed if we did not use cannabis. Open your eyes and your ears. And I'm talking to every Christian around the world right now. You can't make holy oil. Holy oil. 
holy oil without cannabis. Yeah, over 5,000 products can be produced from cannabis. That's correct, that's correct Greg. Yeah, that's dead correct. Yeah. But you can't make holy oil without cannabis, folks. So, yeah, that's to all the Christians out there. You need cannabis to make your holy oil. Because if you're making holy oil without it, you're not making holy oil. <laughs> you're making something else. Holy oil anointing oil was made with can a cannabis. So there you go. Uh, calamus. It was once called calamus. It's been called everything. Marijuana, everything. Reef. Go and look up the na amount of names that cannabis has had over the years. But one government started out because they were lobbied by the oil industry and the paper industry. And in the 1930s, you can look it up, there's videos on this subject. Videos on it. Well, trust me, I've watched them. And um, they turn around and just screwed us over. You might notice that my voice is starting to slur a little bit. That is because of a drug called Endone, which I'm forced to take to stop my pain. Um, when I'm on cannabis, I had none of that. For a solid week, I had none of that effect. Nothing. Not, not one ounce of that effect. But when I got back, my Endone usage has gone back up because it's the only thing that kills the pain. And... Um, now it's getting colder, this is the worst time of the year, it'll more than likely go back up day to day if I don't. And I know I qualify, because I've got five of the conditions that qualify me for it. And all you've got to type in is 42 conditions, or the conditions required for cannabis, medical cannabis, or 42 conditions required for medical cannabis. I will try and find the site, put it in the description for all of you. So, um, yeah... Thank you very much, Dr. Catalaris, for um, joining us. And I do appreciate you coming on and everything. You're a nice guy, by the, by the way. It, um, got a few doctor friends that sort of value uh, the funniest. It, um, but the whole thing is life is worth living. Cannabis can make that life easier. Cannabis can make that life pain-free. Cannabis can make so many products, but it can make life pain-free. It can heal. It can heal. It can make different things happen to the body. Our whole body relies on a cannabinoid system. So if our body relies on the cannabinoid system, why in the fuck aren't we eating it? Why can't we access it? Because we can't have a cannabinoid system without cannabinoids. Think about it. Okay, those of you out there that have been with from the stream, thank you very, 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 very much. And uh, those of you that are my um, Greg uh, loyalty, and uh, I think Michelle was in here. If you guys can jump in here into this chat room in the cannabis protester chat room, jump into that so I can make you. Um, moderators before um, just come in say something that way I can just make you a moderator and everything I would appreciate that guys um, loyalty you too I'm going to make you a moderator and um, so if you can jump into the cannabis protester site so I can drop you all as uh, yeah alright thank you very much everybody and uh, those of you that have not yet subscribed um Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right screen. I've got too many screens here. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Thank you much, Andrew, Dr. Andrew Catalaris, folks, also known as Dr. Pop. Um, and um, don't forget to subscribe. Now, what's that little thing down the bottom? See, uh, once you click that little thing, don't forget to click the little bell or you won't get notified. And I apologise to the mixer people that your chats did not come up on the screen. I'm going to have to look into find out what's going on with the restream bot. I'll give restream a yell so that that way next time your chats come into this chat room. 
and thanks very much to everybody and i shall catch you all later and um yeah just one last thing minister i'm going to keep on asking you to come on the show and i'm not going to stop all right thanks bye